Our next speaker is Amir Moore, um, who is, I beg your pardon for um, misleading you over what Adolfo was going to say, but Amir is going to talk about uh, the NMDA receptor. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Um, first of all, I want to say that this lecture is just a very short brief of uh, eight years of work with my mentor, Professor Grossman, which is a, a dear friend of mine as well. Okay, so um, I will talk about HPNS um, that uh, Chava and the others started to talk about. Uh, in relation to NMDA receptor. There has been a theory since the early 80s that overactivation, hyperexcitability can be mediated through NMDA receptors as well, or maybe NMDA receptor is one of the major mechanisms for the hyperexcitability observed, for example, in HPNS. Moreover, long-term irreversible damage could be mediated through overactivation of the res this receptor. In the early 80s, indirect pharmacological measurements proposed the uh, possibility that uh, this receptor can be overactivated. My PhD work was to examine directly the function of this receptor under hyperbaric conditions. So before going into details, just a few words about the NMDA receptor. This receptor is an excitatory receptor. It belongs to the glutamate receptors family. It's responsible for synaptic plasticity, learning and memory, emotions, locomotion. It is built mainly from two major subunits, NR1 and NR2. NR1 has eight different isoforms, and NR2 has four different isoforms. The receptor itself is a tetramer built from a combination of these NR1 and NR2s, usually two NR1 and two NR2s. As you can see, we have um, several major domains. The transmembrane domains uh, that form the channel pore, the glutamate and glycine binding sites, the glutamate and glycine are co-agonists of this receptor, and the amino or N-terminal domains of these uh, subunits, NR1 and NR2, and these areas are presumed to modulate the channel pore as well. So um, the main research goals were to characterize NMDA receptor's activity at high pressure, to elucidate its role in HPNS, to find whether we can propose neuro neuronal damage mechanism through this receptor, and to try and understand the activity mechanism, and maybe to get a clue or, uh, if we can develop in the future prophylactic medications for HPNS and other uh, mechanisms or effects that we see in, uh, under hyperbaric uh, pressure. So we were employing few, several techniques, um, electrophysiology, um, molecular biology, and later on, bioinformatics. So during the first years, I conducted the research on the hippocampus, brain slices. The technique is very close to what Adolfo and uh, Yoram Metzion showed you. We recorded synaptic potentials, not in the CA3 area. Um, we did that in the CA1 area. We gave stimuli just over axons reaching this area. And in that way, we could record directly NMDA receptor responses. Of course, we blocked other responses with uh, specific pharmacological uh, blockers. The responses are what you see here. This is a single response. The negative deflection is influx 
of cations into the cell through NMDA receptor, and we can see that the response is augmented under hyperbaric conditions. We get the same effect and either, even a bigger effect if we give trained response, uh, trained stimuli, sorry. Uh, here it's facilitation, but um, uh, even trained responses of five stimuli uh, can even show a bigger effect. Moreover, we checked what happens with the physiological blockade of magnesium on this receptor, and surprisingly, under hyperbaric conditions, we needed three times more of the physiological concentration of magnesium to block this receptor. Practically, magnesium does not block the receptor channel um, <coughs> when we increase the pressure to about 100 atmospheres. So just to summarize this stage of the research, which was the first stage, hippocampal NMDA um, receptor currents are significantly augmented under hyperbaric conditions. We saw that through our direct measurements and the physiological blockade by magnesium is practically abolished under high pressure. These two effects, of course they are combined, can lead to excessive influx of calcium, which can be neurotoxic. I will talk about it later. So the next question was to know what happens exactly with different NMDA receptor subtypes. We know that different subtypes of this receptor exist in different brain regions. So maybe if we can know the exact amount or how exactly pre pressure affects these different subtypes, we can know which brain uh, regions, areas, can be more susceptible to pressure or resistant to pressure. So in order to do so, we had to use a completely different system. Um, we had to build the specific receptor subtypes. In order to do so, we needed to use a protein expression system. It is simply a factory that can make proteins um, that we want um, to build. The oocytes of, oocytes of this uh, specific frog, Xenopus levis, is a good system for doing so. If we inject RNA or DNA into these oocytes, RNA or DNA of mammalian proteins or even human proteins, we can um, 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 express them on the cell's membrane and then measure many things, including <coughs> ionic currents. So we succeeded in um, expressing different types of NMDA receptors on these oocytes. And as a matter of fact, Dr. Daniels was the first one to do that uh, during the 90s, and we adopted this idea from him. So um, we used the same pressure chamber, but we had to do several modifications. We removed the famous robotic arm and um, inserted different and unique manipulators in order to employ the two electrode voltage clamp technique, which is another electrophysiological technique for recording very big currents, relatively, from very big cells, which are the oocytes, where you see here. It's a size of a pinhead, something like that, um, safety pin. Okay. Um, so, initially, we recorded currents of two subtypes, the NR11A together with the NR2, and NR11B together with the same one, NR NR2. Two subtypes of NMDA receptor, and we saw that one subtype is augmented, its current is significantly augmented under hyperbaric pressure, and the other one is depressed. Um, we saw the same results 
with calcium or barium. These are the results with barium. We have um, cationic influx uh, through this channel, um, um, through this rece receptor, which is a channel um, of sodium, potassium, and calcium. If we use barium, we can see the, probably the same effect, but with a bigger magnitude. This work is currently being done uh, by Alice, which is a master student that um, uh, inherited my work uh, now at the lab. So um, we wanted to know what happens with eight different subtypes of NMDA receptor. And this is the summary of these all eight subtypes. The most interesting pair is what we see here, the pair that I was uh, talking about before, because in this case, when we talk about the NO11A or gluon11A, together with the 2A, we see augmentation. And if we replace it with the 1B, we see significant depression. Just one change and completely opposite responses, surprisingly. Another surprise was that the rest of the subtypes, subtypes we checked, the, six, the other six were depressed or not changed under high pressure. Just one subtype was augmented and it was very surprising. So we wanted to know what happens with these specific subunits, they probably go through a conformational change while compressing the system. We wanted, we really wanted to know what part of the, um, what region uh, is responsible for that, but we had um, a very big problem. To date, no one could, it, it hasn't been solved yet. The crystal cr uh, structure of the complete functioning receptor hasn't been solved. The um, three-dimensional structure of this receptor is still unknown. But um, there are several regions, including the amino terminal domain or the NTD, which were um, described to a certain extent through similar proteins, bacterial proteins, for example, that were crystallized. So using bioinformatics techniques, we can build predicted three-dimensional structure of, um, the, of a certain domain. For example, the amino terminal domain. First of all, we wanted to know the sequence of these um, parts, domains, and we saw, for example, that the 11A and 11B have only one difference between them. The 1B has an extra 21 amino acid sequence. That's it. And probably the inverse, the opposite effect of the currents that we saw is mediated, at least partially, through the conformational change around this area. So we wanted to build the 3D structure of the area containing this difference, because other areas, the L LBD, ligand binding domain, and the transmembrane domain, uh, in the case of the NR1 units or gluon-1 units, are completely the same. So if the NTD has these differences, we, we built only the 3D structure of this NTD area region and superimposed um, the 1B and 1A over each other and surprisingly again, so that the 21 amino acids sequence form a loop that faces outside and probably this loop can change or modulate somehow the channel spore conductance. So um, by um, 
aligning all structures, if I go back just to see again the complete structure of the receptor, the whole structure together, the tetramere, we concluded that maybe high pressure um, interferes or don't interfere with this ex extra loop formation. And uh, if we talk uh, on the um, 1B that contains this extra loop, probably when we compress the system, the channel pore becomes more tight or closed because uh, this interference is becoming less effective. So our conclusions from the brain slices and um, the OSIT's expression system are as, uh, are as follows. The uh, there is a differential effect by high pressure and probably it is mediated through stru structural differences and different conformational changes. If we take into consideration what happens in the hippocampus, specifically in the hippocampus in the CA1 area, the dominant NM M NMDA receptor subtypes are the 1A with the 2A and the 1A with the 2B. If the 1A and the 2A is augmented, and the 1A with the 2B is not changed under high pressure, there is a net response augmentation. And this is in accordance with our previous studies, publications of the brain slices, brain slices what we saw. And um, in all these experiments, we saw only augmentation. <coughs> Following the work of uh, Daniels and colleagues, our data provide further evidence for selective NMDA receptors involvement in the two major things, the short-term hyperexcitability related to HPNS and the long-term neurotoxicity that was reported during the last decade, decade in professional divers. And it is probably, probably mediated through excessive calcium inf influx under hyperbaric pressure. The significance of this research is evidence for NMD receptor response, uh, media, uh, sorry, NMD receptors mediated CNS deleterious effects, and, uh, the, and that we could make a predicted 3D modeling that provide initial information on conformational changes under high pressure. Um, this data may help in the effort of developing prophylactic um, medications for HPNS and other deleterious effects. I would like to thank my mentor, Professor Rami Grossman, Professor Holman for helping a lot with the RNA constructs. Um, he sent it to us from his lab in Germany and for my colleagues and dear friends, Ben, Merav, Shiri, and Alice for helping me with many, many technical problems and of course for the priceless scientific thinking. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amir.